I'm leaving here with something. And everybody said, oh, my brother did such a phenomenal job on last week, man. When I tell you, let me show you the difference between your pastor vis-a-vis most maybe some pastors. When they're not at church, they're not at church. For those of you who watch online, every time I'm not here, you may see me in the comments Because I just love word, and I love the church, and I love seeing what God does in our ministry, man. I'm uberly excited that once we get this facility open, I've opened the entire wing. Let me show you how how life works. We have an entire wing dedicated to city life. And what that will be is different organizations, different small groups. But what I'm most important proud of and excited about is training more of you to teach on this platform on the weekends. Man, I take this so seriously. You don't know how many inboxes I get from people on the verge of anxiety attacks, on the verge of suicide, on the verge of depression. Uh, So I take who stands up here very important because one misquoted theological construct, one bad word can send somebody down a long path of destruction. But that boy be preaching, man. I, I, he talked about six types of faith, man, and, and it blessed my life. I want to recap it real quickly. Number one, he talked about dead faith. Dead faith. And he described dead faith, faith that receives God's word but, do, but does not respond to it. So number one, we have what? Dead faith. What is dead faith? It's a faith that receives God's word but does not what? respond to it. So many of you who've been with me a long time, whenever I speak a word or somebody speaks a word that resonates with your spirit, you should say what? I receive that. I receive that. You're going to be blessed this year. Favor got your name on it. Doors are opening that you didn't even knock on. See, you, you ought to receive that. Only problem is you're doing a whole lot of receiving and not a lot of responding. All right. So, so somebody say receive. Versus respond. All my parents give me a what, what? All my parents with a child in your house give me a what, what? All my parents who call your child name and they say ma'am or sir but don't move give me a what, what? That's what you look like to God. That's exactly how you look to God. You in the den, you need them to do something. So you say what? Mike, Mike, Mike. And how do you know they received your word because they say what? Ma'am, sir, but didn't they never what? Then you end up saying, if I have to get up, we're going to have a problem. But watch this. Here's where you mess me up. Because you say to them, you don't even correct their response. Because you expected a response. You didn't expect them to receive it. You look at them, brother, and you say what? You didn't hear me calling you or in other words how you heard my voice and didn't respond and what i'm trying to get you to realize is you having all this good church at home you all in the comments preach pastor mike you all in the sanctuary i received that you so and see you're doing all this stuff and god like but you still in the same place spiritually emotionally physically and mentally because you thought just because you caught it you had it But if you catch it and don't plan it and don't water it and don't respond to it, you will always be stuck in a perpetual cycle. Somebody say dead faith. faith. Domesticated faith. Domesticated faith. Domesticated faith is a faith that has been tamed by trauma. Tamed by trauma. Y'all pray for me. I I couldn't sleep the other night and and, and landing myself on YouTube shorts, okay? Landing myself. And you you ever been on there? You just been swiping? And and the internet is crazy. Internet is hilarious, matter of fact. You swipe long enough, you're just going to be laughing, screaming. I woke the whole house up because this man started out talking about these lions he was training. And he had this whip. He would hit hit Hitting the lions, I was like, why is he beating on these lions like that? And he used a word that I think is apropos to what I'm talking about. He says, I'm taming them, Michael. Now, something in the lion, although they were born in captivity, is screaming, I'm bigger than this. So if they were born in a cage and never experienced the wilderness, why does he still have to tame them? It's because regardless of what environment you put it in, something on the inside 
is saying I'm better than this. I'm preaching to three of y'all who can't figure out why every time you turn around, bill behind. Why every time you turn around, haters keep attacking you because the devil knows that I can beat you all I want to, but I can't stop the something that's on the inside of it. You sit next to a hater, so just reach over that hater and high five another neighbor and tell him I can't even explain it. I ain't never lived in a $10 million house, but for some reason it's inside of me screaming. That's why I belong. I ain't never had half the stuff I want, but God put something on the inside of me. Can I have church by myself? This joy. Y'all too sleep, Rock City. I need my online church. This joy that I have. The world. Mm didn't give it and the world this this is why the writer said hide the word Jesus hide the word Yo, hide, hide hide the word why, why PMJ because many of you keep falling in your faith because when life and the devil pat you down and they find the word in your pocket, they find the word in your hand, they find the word in your phone, the devil can take your secret. But when it's in your heart, he can hit you all he want to. And you can say, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed. Somebody shout, it's in my heart. It's called domesticated faith. Number three, double-minded faith. Double-minded faith. That's a faith that lacks fulfillment due to a lack of focus. A faith that lacks fulfillment. It is double-minded. Number four, delegated faith. Faith that allows others to exercise faith for you when you lack faith for yourself. Pastor D, this got to be your second book right here, The Six Types of Faith. Go ahead and jump on it because you know they're watching. They're going to be having it all over Instagram in two weeks. So hear me. So hear me when I say this. Delegated faith. Faith that allows others to exercise faith for you when you lack faith for yourself. That's heavy. Stephanie, they don't even know when to shout. They don't know when to shout. Because you want to know what I've discovered? There's a lot of people in your life who you got to cut off, who ain't did nothing wrong. <laughs> Pastor Mike, no, because society and, and, and inadequate preaching has taught you that you only cut off people who harm you. There are certain people you're going to have to cut off this year because they're draining too much of your faith. You don't even have enough left to believe for yourself because you're too busy having to always believe for them. I don't mind encouraging you, but I will not enable you. Michael, I'm preaching whether you receive it or not. I don't mind encouraging you, but I will not enable you. Because you want to know what I discovered? Whenever you don't have enough faith to get it for yourself, you will not properly take care of what God gives you. And I'm going to end up mad at you anyway because I'm the one who had to pray, fast, and give for you to have what you keep disrespecting. So if I'm going to fast, pray, and lose my mind, I might as well do it for myself. I, 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 I feel God ain't here today. I can't enable you. So hear me when I say this. Delegated faith. Somebody say delegated faith. No, I delegate a lot. I become a man of authority, but I'm a man under authority. I love the scripture that says, he, tell, he rolled up on Jesus and says, my servant is at home sick. I, I don't need you to come to my house. You can just tell him to get healed from right here. Since I'm a man of authority, I tell this one to go and this one to come, and he does exactly what I tell him to do. So I understand, I understand delegation. There's certain things, certain means I don't even go. I don't, no, Tip, you got that. Handle your business. Certain stuff, Pastor D, I, I want to hear it. Just go right now. Whatever you want to do ministry-wise, I trust you. I'm standing behind you. Go kill it. I don't know what they're singing on Sundays. Back in the day, we used to have a singing on Sunday meeting. And I was sitting in the room, what are we singing? Who's leading it? No, do it in front of me. You, I drove Curtis them crazy back in the day. I used to make Kurt, Amanda, Terrell, all of them sing it right there in front of me. Let me hear you sing it. Do it again. What you going to say? 
You're talking too much. Then I come back the next week. I don't want nobody to talk this week. Because the whole song y'all was talking goes straight from the, why did the music stop, Rod? Never let the music stop. Transitions. Transitions. Now, I don't be bit more knowing what nobody going to sing. You mean to tell me I got award-winning musicians, world-sought-after drummers, worldwide, worldwide recognized writers, and I'm still going to have my hands on it? You delegate when they're qualified or being qualified. You do not delegate when they've proven they're irresponsible. I, I got to stop. N -n Number five, divine faith. Divine faith, faith that not only believes in Jesus, but believes like Jesus. Then number six was what? Dormant faith. That's faith that is only activated through Adversity. I believe that may be one of the top three sicknesses in the body of Christ. That you can only believe God when you're in trouble. Christ is more than the Christ of the crisis. Do I need to run that back? Christ is more than the Christ of the crisis. If the only time you call on Christ is in crisis, you do not understand the real power of your Christ. Am I preaching to anybody? And what I'm trying to get you to realize is some of you only acti activate your faith in adversity. When you got money in the bank, you're a bit more pray. Raise your hands. Tell the truth, Shane, the devil right now. Let's, just, let's get free. In the comments right now, I want you to put hands up in the comments if you know good and well, you don't even pray hard when your money right. Rate, rate. See, y'all liars, man. Y'all be lying. That's why nobody like y'all now, because y'all be lying so much. Church folk always lying. You know good and well. Let that deposit hit. I'm finna show you what your whole prayer life look like when your deposit hit. You ready? Deposit hit. Woo, look at God. That's your whole prayer right there. When that bill was... <laughs> When that bill come out, you ain't never went to your account. Have you ever gotten a car and was like, I can't wait till tonight. We're going to go to so-and-so, grab something to eat. Then we're going to go to so-and-so. Then midway through the day, you check your account. And some came out this day that should have came out two weeks ago. So now you say, God, it's me. Because you can only call on him in crisis. In a resurfaced clip of a candid interview, the great Denzel Washington, Denzel Washington opened up when he recognized that he would not win an award ceremony in 1988. Denzel's in an interview in 1988, and he realized he's not going to win the award. And in this interview, he suggests he prepared to leave. Then a thought came to his mind. <laughs> I'm leaving here with something. In other words, I may run by myself. I'm not leaving here empty-handed. I didn't come this far only to come this far. I'm leaving here with something. I don't know who I'm preaching to. Please don't tell me you went through that big breakup just to leave empty. I'm leaving here with something. Please don't tell me you went through all the hell you've been through for the last five years just to say you made it. No, I'm leaving here with something. As believers, I'm going to have church by myself. We either win or we learn. Either way, I don't lose. That's for five of y'all. See, only one, two, three, four. Only four of us caught that. Five, six. The rest of y'all losers, y'all can stay seated. No, I don't win or lose. I win or learn because every loss is a lesson and every lesson leads to a blessing. Michael, this teaches us, put this in your notes, that winning requires, here's a word we always talk about at Rock City Church, refocusing. Win the ninth month, right? How many more months left in the year? What are the three months? This is why you lose. There are not three months left in a year. There are four. Yep, because you not even count September. So when we look at our life, we say, ain't but three months left, September, October, November. I'm not relenting September. Michael, no. I came to tell September. 
I'm leaving here with something. <laughs> I'm preaching if you're receiving. No, I got four, three and a half, four months left in this year. So I want to say this to you like I say every year. Here it is. Refocus. Now, some of you should be able to finish this definition. Refocus means what? To adjust your focus on something new or to stay focused on the, with a, it's time to refocus. This is not an event. This is something you have to do regularly. Regularly, my car check engine light has been on now for probably three and a half weeks, three and a half weeks, and I keep saying, I'm going to get yours too. I'm a, we got, we're we going to get our stuff fixed, okay? All right, cool. Make sure I, you tell me. I'm serious. We're going to go get that fixed, okay? Because three, four weeks, check in ahead. I don't want to take it to the shop because it's going to be something I don't want to pay for. In my head, <laughs> y'all finna laugh at me. They're going to go, oh, okay, cool. No, you need a whole new engine. Like, what? No, just, just put the one that was in there back in there. Let me ride around for another six months. No, it's dead. It's gone. Like, ah. No, well, Deacon Gotti. Came by the house, said, Pastor Mike, I got a day. I ain't doing nothing. What you need? I said, well, my check engine light on. He was like, I tell you what, I got you. I said, man, let's go. He calls me. I just needed some oil. And there was some type of chip in my car that if I didn't address the oil, it sent off a light that said something was wrong. My, y'all, y'all, y'all missed it. Y'all, y'all, y'all missed it. In other words, my car was screaming at me, refocus. Re I know I'm operating, but if you want me to continue to operate at a high level, every now and again, you got to. <laughs> and according to our working definition, I've said this before, do you need to focus on something new? Or do you need a new perspective? That's important. Do you need to focus on something new? Or do you need a new perspective? I absolutely love this text because in this text it reveals to us that people who have arrived in the promised land but desire more territory in the land. That can preach. Y'all slow. That, that, yeah, that can preach. Y'all don't be shouting on the stuff. I be wanting y'all to shout on. Like really, I want you to see the mindset. Look at the dog in them. D, James, Quran, look at the dog in them. They are in the promised land. Pause. I've taught you this before. It is not called the promised land. It's called the what? E-D, promised land. That's a whole nother theological discussion. It's called the promised land. They get to the promised land and look at God and say, we need some more. These are my folk right here. Hey, yeah. Hear me, y'all laughing at me. We ain't even opened this church yet. And I was at staff meeting yesterday like, yeah, this ain't big enough. We, 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 like, we ain't got in here yet. Yeah, but I'm already looking in uh, the parking lot. Be looking full now. It don't even be that many of us in here. I'd be pulling up like, oh, we got a crowd. What, what about that? Like, hey, we, we, need, we need some more. I, I need some more. And see, your neighbor and your cousin going to look at you and say, you greedy. I'm not greedy if I'm still hungry. Michael! My enough ain't your enough, and your enough ain't my enough. Just because you satisfied don't mean I'm not satisfied. Well, ain't God gonna think something wrong with you? He knew it wasn't enough because he put more in me when he gave it to me. He wanted to see if I had a faith to get here, and if I got a faith to get to the... Sit down! Sit down! They get to the promised land and say... Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. We want more territory in it. So, so let me paint the picture. Let me paint the picture, okay? They get to the promised land. And they say, no, we love the promised land. We are numerous. We just need some more space here. We don't want to leave, but just give us that one too. Uh, so, Y'all don't get it. Okay, let me paint the picture. Okay, so let me paint the picture. I'm finna run. I got a boot on, and I can't really run like I want to run, but I'm getting excited. So I'm going to be running like this. So, so hear me, hear me when I say this, okay? Let me paint the picture. I thank you for the church. And I thank you for the field. But what them dorms over there doing? I ain't trying to be funny. And what's all that over there across the street? And that little house right there, it don't even look like nobody in that either. And see, and see the devil will try to convince you, you should just be grateful for what you got. 
Watch, 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 watch this. I am gratefulness does not mean I stop dreaming and believing. Gratefulness is when I'm crazy enough to thank God for what he's doing. But then at the end of my thinking, God saying, God, I know you can do it. And abundantly. See, I'm not preaching to everybody. Only 10 of y'all who can just give God a, I see some more praise. I need you to walk over to three people, slap them a high five, and shout more. More joy. More peace. More favor, more land, more money, more health, more anointing, more glory, more customers, more favor, more property, more, more, more. We want some more, we want some more, we want some more. <laughs> Sit down. Watch this. They are not frustrated because of greed, but because of growth. See, that's the barometer if your motives are right. That's your barometer if your motives are right. You're not going to smile at me. That's the barometer if your motives are right. Greed, put that in your notes, or growth. Greed or growth. You're not greedy. You're growing. All right, I, I, wanna, I wanna ask you a question, okay? I done picked up a little weight, okay? It's all right, I done picked up a little weight. I know, it's cool. Picked up a little weight, okay? Picked up a little weight, all right? So this shirt, XL, uh, new black sheep coming soon. Uh, uh, new, new XL, new, new, new free commercial. All right, so XL. These pants, 2X, okay? It's all right, it's all right, all right? Can I ask you a question? But I'm comfortable. Yeah. Uh-oh, I'm finna step on some toes. What would you do if I would've walked out here to preach with my old large on? Titties and stomach <laughs> all over the place. And I would've kept on my 30, 36, 30s, so not a super tight. <laughs> now you love me. So when I walked out there, you would have said, <laughs> let me show you exactly what you did. You would have said, <laughs> and the talk of service would have been. Didn't Pastor Mike preach? He preached. What was going on with that shit? <laughs> Pastor start wearing jeggings. You know, like, like it would have been real awkward, wouldn't it? So because I'm experiencing growth, I have to go up a size. See, God won't be mad at you. Why would God, say that better, why would God be mad at you for asking for more because of the growth he gave. <laughs> stagnant people will try to guilt you into staying stagnant. <laughs> well, what you get another property for? Don't you got like 10? Yes. So what you need another one for? <laughs> Greed or growth. I want to prophesy over your life. Get ready to experience uncomfortable growth. <laughs> uncomfortable growth. God doesn't mind you asking for more. He doesn't mind. That's why I was trying my best to put a parking lot in the back. I was trying my best to put a parking lot in the back. I, I, I didn't go through the proper channels. I'll admit that. I didn't think I had to. It's my property. I'm from the hood. <laughs> if I decide... <laughs> I <grew up. laughs> We in Valleydale. I'm, I'm not from Valleydale. Everybody from the ghetto gonna understand this statement. If I decide to put something in my backyard, I'm not gonna ask you. Well, that ain't how I work out of here. I cleared my land. They pulled the cement. 
the first half of the parking lot was done, I go Instagram. We got a parking lot. <laughs> Section 35473. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my bad. I ain't no, didn't nobody tell me. <laughs> now, let me show you the difference between me and everybody else. That's what I told them. I said, it's my backyard. <laughs> Pastor Mike, this is commercial. What? No, this ain't commercial. This is Christian. This is a church. They're trying to make me Walmart. This church. I tried. I tried. I should have told them to do it at nighttime. I need y'all to do it at night. Do it at night. No, so they was like, no, you can't do that. You got, where the specs? Where the plans? Are you, where, you, where your so and so? We, we got a little, there it is. Boom, there it is. Yada, yada. They couldn't phantom. This is heavy. Why you need more parking spaces? They said that was a church before you and it was fine. <laughs> that was a church after that. And I looked at him and said, well, Joshua 17 and 14, we are numerous people. My God, I feel like at a church. I, I, I said, so sir, I was just looking at, I just want space. And I, I, had, I had to give them, I said, no, I want my people to be able to park. And I want a whole parking lot so the early morning service park right here. Then the people who coming in don't have to wait on spots, they park right here. But then my volunteers got their own parking lot, they park right there. And then I got the golf carts going to come get them. Then we got the shuttle that'll come. I, I want a whole excellence because we growing. We're growing. And see, that's not greed. That's not greed. That's not greed. I had an old pastor tell me about a month ago. He said, God, he said God was right in picking you to be used. Older. I said, why he said? He said, Mike, because had God been doing in anybody else's life, what he's doing in your life, they would have been so flamboyant. He said, we were sitting around, a couple pastors, sitting around talking today. And they said, I ain't never seen this. They said, do we have any clothes? It's always t-shirts and jeans. He said, what, what, what do we got? He said, he said, had that been anybody else? It ain't about that. It ain't about that. No, it, it ain't greed. It's the people of Joseph said to Joshua, why have you given us only one allotment and one portion for an inheritance? We are, Michael McClure, a numerous people. Put this in your notes. Winning season is about maximizing what you already have. <clears throat> Winning season is about maximizing what you already have. Joshua is showing us that before we adjust our focus to something new, we must first develop a new perspective. It's a sad thing to go into a new season with a what? Old perspective. Joshua, who's the leader, has to set their focus. That's important. He sets their focus. He sets their focus. Now, Dre's going to enjoy this. My media department is going to enjoy this because they know the old cameras we had, they had to always focus them. The old ones, they, it, it get ugly. We get the wrong person on the camera. Back in the day, whole sermon be blurry. Now, these new cameras, most of them have what I would call autofocus. It's hard to mess it up. Some of them got autofocus. That if you just put it on there, it events, it's autofocus. I want to free you. You don't have autofocus. <clears throat> in my flesh. <laughs> Well, of no good thing. I don't have autofocus. It's hard. It's hard. Uh, one of my favorite football players in college football right now is Travis Hunter. He's playing both sides at Colorado. We've been following Travis since high school, right? So he's playing with Coach Prime at Colorado. He's getting off. He's playing offense and defense. He played almost every snap yesterday. N -n Let me show you what's crazy. And the announcer said something that almost made me scream. He said, before you can play another position, you got to master your first one. He said the only reason we let him play offense because he's mastered defense. So are you trying to do something new 
and still ain't mastered what you're supposed to be doing? How you ain't mastered being a Christian, but you're ready to be somebody past that? You ain't mastered being a friend yet. See, Michael, I, I, I got it. I got it. I, I got it. I, I got to go. Y'all don't be liking me. So it's, it's my job to set your focus. Please hear me when I say this. If I felt that music was getting in the way of Rock City Church, music would stop because this, it's my first focus. Now, when I saw the music was about to take off, I went and sat down with my brother at a restaurant and said, Dee, the only way I can do this is if you come home. I had to sit down with a Tiffany and say, now look, I need you to lock in. Put your big girl pants on and be very clear. I need you X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. If something, just some, here's your something. You can do this, do this. Bring this here. Bring every week. As long as y'all two on one accord. If D and Tip on one accord, they equal me. So in my head, if they break it, I'll fix it. So my question is, what you trying to step out of that you ain't either one mastered or even fulfilled? I'm sorry, right now, you probably can't start a business. Your house may fall off too much. No, you don't think I want to be on tour? This is touring season. You don't think me and James would love to be on a bus somewhere? Cali, what's up? New Mexico, what's up? Baltimore, how y'all doing? Philly! Ask me what we saying. We are. Because <laughs> we both realize in this season, no, nah, we can't, we got to, Wusa. 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 It's bad enough we ain't in church. Now, we can't not be in church. Then every Sunday they see us. <laughs> After a while, they're like, he need to bring all that back to Birmingham. That's what he need to do in Jesus' name. No. So I want to, I want to free you. Just like Joshua, I want to set your focus. Four months left. September, October, November, December. What can you get out of these four months? We come to make an announcement to 2023. I'm leaving here with something. Look at me, look at me, look at me. You may not leave here with a million dollars and the business, but you're going to leave here at least with the name incorporated. See, you see uh, something. Somebody shout something. something. Something may not be the thing, but it's still something. Did you catch what I just said? Do you hear the words that are coming out of my mouth? Look at what it says right here. The people of Joseph have received their lot, but are complaining about what they received because they have outgrown it. I'm going to make this statement. Only three of y'all going to catch it. There are some people and places that you have outgrown. You've outgrown it. And let me free you. Okay, because y'all want to shout. There are some people and places that have outgrown you. You know, I saw one of my, I saw a former member yesterday, and they said, Pastor my hello, I gave him a big, I said, man, how you doing? I'm like, well, I want to let you know I met someone so church. You know what I said to him? Why? I'm just playing. That's, that was a joke. I just want to make sure you're still focused. No, I, 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 said, I said, I'm so happy for you. I said, what you doing? Well, I'm so, oh, my God. What? Oh, look, look. I'm so happy. And I gave him a big old hug, kiss on the cheek, dapped up their son. Hey, man, what's up, boy? So, what's so, up, so, man? Okay, yeah, I love y'all. Now, see, because heresy, who knows what heresy is? Yeah. De- what's heresy? You become a heretic, blasphemous. All is right with you. I have an autonomy on God, blasphemous. Heresy doesn't believe in it. I don't believe heresy starts with doubting God. I believe heresy starts in believing that you're the only one right about God. You become dogmatic. That means your way is the best way. Heresy, a dogmatic means 
Can't nobody get to heaven unless they come through Rock City. When the Bible says one man plants, another man waters, and God gives what? So I had to realize there are people who have outgrown me. And many people, there are so many people who are going to be miserable because you feel like everybody who left you was wrong. Maybe they were in purpose. Can I ask you a question? One man plants. Let's go to the second one. Do this. Water. Let me see you water. Boogie. All right, stop. All right? Let me see you water. Thank you. Let me see you water. Thank you. Let me see you water. After a while, you're going to kill that plant. I had to put some rocks and a trench in my backyard because the backyard was a little flood area. And all them plants, I, they died. I look at my guy, you know, sometimes black people, we think everybody hustling. I said, no, you finna, you paying for these plants. He said, Pastor, Pastor Mike, I, I, no, I, I can't play for the plants. He, he, he said, I told you when we put it back here that it floods. I, he, said, he said, it floods. He said, Pastor Mike, it floods. I, I said, but it's water. Plants need water. So if I put a plant where it's a whole lot of water, it should be double big. It's getting all the water. And he said, Pastor Mike, no. It doesn't have the ability to say that's enough. So too much water will kill anything. There are certain seasons when you're not equipped to give people and places what it needs. The NFL knows it. That's why the Patriots let Tom Brady leave. The NFL knows it. That's why they let Aaron Rodgers go to the Jets. The NBA knows it. That's why they didn't fight hard for Jordan to stay that first time. They know everything outgrows something. The only thing that doesn't understand that is church. And the only people who do a bad assessment of themselves are church people. Because if I set your focus, I'll strengthen your faith. Your lot, put this in your notes, your lot is what God gives you, but your life is what you build it on. Your lot is what God gives you, but your life is what you build it on. Two types of problems I see in this text. Put this in your notes. Good problems and bad problems. Who's ever built a home? Anybody, anybody ever built a home? You had to get a what? Lot. You had to get a lot. You just can't wake up and build it. <laughs> no. If I'm not mistaken, Tiffany, you have to pay the tax on the lot, right? Yeah, you got to pay the tax on the lot. Some of y'all, <laughs> they'll come get your grass and let you keep the house. <laughs> no, that's that lot, lot, L-O-T, lot. Your lot is what God gives you, but your life is what you build it on. This is good. This is good. I'm finna stop. I'm tired. Y'all tired of me. Good problems. Here it is. We've outgrown what we have. That's a good problem. If you feel like you've outgrown where you are, this is the perfect time to refocus, and here's why. Here's a famous quote from Rock City Church. You may have become impressive, but not impactful. You may have more money, but it now lacks meaning. You may have more opportunities, but lack obedience. You may have popularity finally, but you lack prayer. More likes, but you lack love. What's the bad problem? You've grown in numbers, but not in perspective. What does it profit to be a mile long and an inch thick? inch deep what does it profit to have 2,000 members but can't fix nothing what does it profit to go to school for 13 years and then retain none of what you learn can I ask you a question I want you to answer this at home and in this room do you need something new 
or do you need a new perspective? Look at what verse 17 says. But Joshua said to the tribes of Joseph, to Ephraim and Manasseh, you are numerous and very powerful. You will not have only one allotment, but the forested hill country as well. Clear it, and its farthest limits will be yours. That's crazy. He says, you want some more? I tell you what, there's a forest. Clear it. Or in other words, put this in your notes, make room. Michael, I might have church by myself. Make room. In other words, he says, you can have it, but make room. Make room. That makes me think of Tiffany. Tiffany, when she first came to me, she wanted to do properties. I sat down with my staff, and one of the failures I feel I made in my 20s with my original staff were some of the first people that was on staff with me. We were so busy building a church, I didn't do a good enough job, in my opinion, of making sure they had something they were building. So if you look up in eight or nine years, everybody's like, we're well, we building a church, but what do I have? So what I did was about 10 years ago, uh, uh, seven years ago, was auto-focus, correct. I said, Dre, what you want to do? I want a media company, Arcadia. All right, what you want, Leslie? I want to write books. Boom. He edit this one. Now, boom. Now she's editing books for people you, you won't even know. All this stuff. One of the things Tiffany wanted to do was houses. But we didn't have no money. So we took maybe $1,000, went down to the goddamn, what you call it? You know how they do the thing when they auction the properties? And then she came back in there. She walks back in the office. I bought eight houses. In my head, I was like, with what money? She says, let's go look at them. I get in the car with her. I'm like, see, that's why you follow me. I'm going to lead you to the promised land. I'm going to lead. I told y'all I was going to lead to the promised land. I tried to get emotional. Your mom and daddy looking from heaven. They so proud of you. Then we pulled up to the first one, Joe. I'm like, what's this? I like, this the first one. I was like, all right. Then we went around the corner to the second one. I could, see, I could stand in the front yard, see the backyard. I said, like, all right. Then we went to the third one, and it was nice. Siding on it. I said, we finna blow up. We go through the front door, and in the words of color purple, it's going to rain on your head. After five, I was like, you got it. I, I said, you got it. I said, I, said, you, I said, if you happy, I'm happy. God bless you. All right, you lost your mind. Now, you want to know what I say to her? I don't think you ever paid me, paid me back for them. Like, if this is a partnership, I still ain't seen nothing. Like, where, where, where's the money? I, I, where, where's the, I need to know where it's at. Because she had enough sense, like Joshua 17 and 18, clear it. Michael, th- can I ask you a question? What if the more that you're asking God for comes with the label that says assembly required? See, because I need to reset your focus. A lot of y'all ain't asking God for something new. A lot of y'all asking God for something new that's already done. I'm finna free you. If I take this shirt off and fold it and give it to him, it's new to him. Y'all miss that. No, so what, what do you mean when you say new? What do you mean? Never used or new to you? What you want? So when you told God I needed more, what exactly did you mean? Because you over here saying, God, I just want more peace. He sent more problems. Because you can only get peace when you master. Peace is not the absence of a problem. Peace is when a problem shows up, but on Christ. The solid rock I stay. I'm preaching to somebody. I'm trying to set your focus. Michael, he says, you can have all that. Farthest limits will be your. Think of the farthest li- But I need you to clear it. Cle- Michael, I need you to clear it. Michael, I, I, I need, because when you clear your life, you regain a sense of control. My closet was disrespectful. Hear, I, y'all laugh. Hear me when I say this. I'm, if I posted a picture of my closet, you cannot see the floor. My boy, Miles, goes in the closet. He calls it the mountain. 
He, climbed, he walks all the way on top of it. See, because I didn't really have a lot of stuff. See, we didn't have stuff. We've always had peace and favor and joy and great family, but I didn't have stuff. I never had brands. So I, com- I convinced myself that I didn't care about stuff. Clothes, no, I, didn't, I couldn't get it, so I didn't care about it. So whenever I go somewhere and do something, I just take it off, throw it on the floor, take it off, throw it on the floor. No, it's a shirt. I don't care about this shirt. So now, Felipe fixed it. All right, so, so my stylist said, no, where's all that stuff I've gotten you all over the years? I said, uh-huh, it's in the closet. He said, no, we're not doing that. He said, I'm going to come fix it. I come home. They don't want in there and fix the closet. I got a rug in, on the floor in the little closet now, right? So I'm sitting there looking. I'm like, oh, snap. And I'm just looking at the closet. So this morning, you see these little joggers? I'm like, where I get these little joggers from? He was like, they was on the floor. So I'm like, oh, it had a little tag on it, little joggers, you know, a little jogger situation. Just a little jogger situation with the zip. Look at this. Look, get y'all. Stuff in the pockets. Look at this. Little jogger. Look at this. Pull you out. Then you got the little zipper right here. Then a the little zipper right here. And I'm like, oh, snap. Like this morning, I was supposed to wear a suit. Messed around and found these joggers. I was like, I'm going to put them joggers on. Then I'm going to put my T-shirt on. Oh my. So I'm in there this morning, got my little joggers on, got my little T-shirt. I found this other little shirt that was kind of a little sequence little shirt. Found a little Migos looking shirt that had the holes in it. So I'm in there like, oh, so <laughs> they're going to be mad at me. Because as of right now, most of that back on the floor. Because I, <laughs> this morning, I had a fashion show. I was in there like, oh, I got this one shirt that got this thing that go across it like this. Then it got some stuff on the back. Only problem is it was like three me's ago. Y'all missed that. It was three me's ago. I can't button it. So I decided I'm going to just put a tank under. It's an open shirt now. It's not a button shirt. It's an open shirt. I started finding, hear me, finding my foot was messed up, right? So my Achilles and all this other stuff was going on, yada, yada, yada. It's like when you get through church, Come by to the office. We're going to take care of you. I'm going to come over there on a Sunday just for you. Guess what I found at the bottom of my closet? I'm not going to pay twice. Show it, Dre. I am not going to pay twice for this boot. I called my doctor back. I said, hey, I found a boot. He said, what does it look like? I said, I can FaceTime you. He said, oh, that's perfect. Put it on. Press the bubbles on the side. I said, it's tight. He said, just wear that for a week. Boy, I've been walking around with this boot because you don't know what you got. Some of the stuff you need to flip your life, you ain't going to find till you clear some stuff out. Some of the people you need ain't going to show up till you clear some stuff out. God, I just want a good husband. No, the husband's prepared but you still got boo-boo in your face. And God loved your future husband too much to let him get his heart broke because you got this fool in your face. So God is saying, the moment you clear it out, I'll run it up. I I I just need you to touch five people and shout, clear it out. Every name in your phone that don't mean no good, clear it out. Everything you got that ain't bringing you peace, clear it out. Because I want to prophesy God's about to run it. Seven people out of type. You ought to just walk over and slap three people, high five, and shout, it's clearing season. You missed that. It's clearing season. Get ready for good measure. Press down. Shaking together. Running over. God's about to run it. Run it up. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, neighbor. You want something new, right? Start clearing some stuff out. How you believe in God for new furniture, but ain't got rid of the old furniture? How you believe in God for something new? Six of y'all need to start packing this night and say, God, I want to speak by faith. God's getting ready to send me what eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. I just need you to shake three people and shout, clear it out. Clear it out. 
Clear it out. Clear it out. And watch it run it up. Clear it out. Clear it out. Clear it out. And watch him running up. <laughs> Clear it out. Clear it out. Clear it out. And watch him run it up, run it up. Clear it out. <laughs> Clear it out. Clear it out. And watch him run it up, run it up. It's one thing to know where you want to go. It's another one to know how to get there. Watch this. And declutter means I can't see clear. We got to go. Some of your life too cluttered. It's too cluttered. You got to clear it out. It's too cluttered. But Pastor Mike, I'm single right now, and I got friends. That might be the problem. I want to ask you a question. She said, you're speaking to me, Jesus. <laughs> Father God, I come against all these friends in Jesus' name. That's why I love this church so much, man. Let me, let me give you an example, okay? Let me give you an example, okay? God love you, all right? And let's just say God love you, okay? God loves both of y'all. But he knows the desire of your heart. You, want, you need somebody good in your life. But in this season, you got all these friends. So let me free you. And although they friends to you, <laughs> in their head, they think they got shot. So in their head, I want you to see all these prayers. Some of the Spirit telling me to talk directly to you in Jesus' name. Lift your hands. Put it on camera right now so all her friends can see each other. Lord, all friends. Don't put it on camera. That's my, that's my daughter. Don't put her business in the street. Don't put her business in the street. Don't do that. We're not going to do it like that. But the, I want to, let's play devil's advocate. God love you. God love you. God love you. All right? And God sees your heart like, you a beautiful woman, beautiful man. Man, I, I gotta. I wanna. I wanna send them something, not to complete them, cause you're already complete, but to assist them in their journey. Caught that? But these friends are talking to the same guy you talk to. So here goes six friends putting in orders for the same meal. So I believe in my heart, God says, I'm going to let that stay cluttered till you. <laughs> Can you answer this question for me at home and in the room? What are the things you need to clear out of your life so you can conquer all God has for your life? You want to know why I pulled completely out of Farsdale? I really felt in my heart. Had I not, I wouldn't have went all in with this. I believe that. Miss Pope, I, I, we'll still be having church right now in Farsley. You want to know what would have happened? I said, no, y'all taking notes. No, we good. We still having church. We would have never went as hard as we did. When you walk, Rock City, when you come here and you walk through this building, you're going to be like, this is so nice. It's so nice, clean. Oh, my God. I forgot which captain it was, but when he got to land, the king burned the ships. Who said that? The king, you know what I'm talking about? They got to land, and everything in front of him was greater than him, and he ordered all his leaders to burn the ships. Because he knew had he kept the ships, the team would have tried to go back. What do you need to clear out? That's rich, ain't it? Friends, oh, this is good. What do you need to clear out of your heart? Who hurt you and you refuse to let it go? Number two, claim it. <coughs> claim it. Claiming requires confidence. That can preach. They're going to tear that up during Devo Energy all week. Claiming requires confidence. This is why clearing is important because lack of clarity produces passivity. You want to know what? I got so many major decisions to make in my life. When I say so many major decisions, I have so many major decisions to make in my life right now. When I say major, 
I got decisions that make that have pushed me to 50 now. Whatever decisions I make now, I'm stuck in some of them to 50, 55. Major decisions. Major decisions. And I'm sitting here now, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me two days ago on a plane. He said, Mike, the reason you haven't made a decision is because you're afraid. You've never been afraid in your life. I ain't never been scared of nothing. I walked into the Boutwell, 5,000 seats with no money in the pocket. He was like, oh, we finna do this. I signed the contract. <laughs> like, had they asked for proof, like, bank state? I, I am not, I don't, you sure you can handle this? Oh, yeah, let's get it done. <laughs> then did a video right out there. God bless you, Rock City, man. Look, we were at the Boutwell. Walked into a media meeting. We had to get all the equipment for it. It was like $200,000. I walked in there and sat at the head of the table. I said, this is what we're going to do, man. I'm going to give you something. We're going to figure that out. I said, we got we to get this done. All right, where, where do I sign? Sign that joint. Went and got in the car like, whoo, 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 whoo. I ain't never been scared of nothing. Like, was scared? Boy, do you know who my daddy is? My father's rich. The house is in land. If it's God's will, it's his bill. Never. But for the first time in my life, I think I'm scared. And that's all right to admit. I'm human. I'm not Jesus. I'm your pastor, not your savior. No, so I think for the first time when I sit here, I got options. And I want, I want all of it. But it doesn't work that way. So what I've discovered is, since I haven't cleared out some of the options, a lack of clarity produces passivity. And I want to free you. Don't be so quick to claim what you are unwilling to clear. That's crazy, right? Joseph and Tiffany and so many other you, Roy, a lot of you guys, Deb, and properties. And I'd be laughing so hard at stuff that they said. I would be sitting in the room years ago hearing them talk and it would irritate me because that's not my thing. I'm like, come on, y'all just go somewhere with that. And they'd be sitting there getting excited. And Joe come walking in. No, I'm telling you, Woodlawn, I'm telling you something gonna happen in Woodlawn. That boy believed in Woodlawn with his whole heart, boy. I'm telling you, Pastor Mike, you get something in Woodlawn. I'm like, boy, I'm not giving me nothing in Woodlawn. Leave me alone. <laughs> now you see everything happening in Woodlawn. I'm like, hey man, what's going on with Woodlawn? Everything happening in Woodlawn? <laughs> Too late. It's already skyrocketing. I'm like, oh, had I cleared out? See, cleared out doesn't mean empty it. It means assess it. <clears throat> See, clearing out don't mean empty it. It means assess it. I'm finna free 70, y'all. I'm finna free 70, y'all. I had two big trees in the front of my house, right? And I couldn't stand them because when I turned the corner, I couldn't see my house. I wanted to see it. You know how you pull up and be like, oh, that's nice. I wanted to see it. I wanted to see God. I want to see it. So ask me what I did. Cut them down. Ask me what's my problem now. Miles room be on fire. His room, oh hear me. Miles room. Miles room be 80. And I keep telling him, if you can sleep through this, you're gonna be super fast. It's like a superpower. See, if you sleep in the heat, how you think flash runs so fast? Look at his feet, it's on fire. He slept in the fire. So in Miles, in Miles' head, he think his room is this chamber that's developing his speed. So I'm going to drop the video today. He walk, he'll run through the house. I speed it up a little. My, I'm sleeping in here with you. All right, so we finally had to fix it. We had to kind of put these little bushes in front of the window. I met the architect. I said, you know, I cut them trees down. He said, why would you do that? I said, they were ugly. He said, it, but it was for your good. He said, no, when we picked that lot, when we originally built the house, it was facing the sun. He said, and they wouldn't let us put it this way, so we had to put it this way. So we decided we put these two big so-and-sos right here. They would grow, and by year seven, they would do this, and by year tip 15, it would be, oh, they, they gone now. They gone. <laughs> Them things gone. And I learned a very important lesson. Before I cleared it, I should have assessed it. Who'd have never been washing clothes and found some money in somebody else's clothes and kept it? You're a thief. 
You a thief. You a thief. You a thief. You didn't give it back. Thief. 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 Church full of thieves. Do y'all tithe? I need to check all y'all tithing. But who, who ever been washing clothes and like, oh. They should have assessed their stuff before they cleared their stuff. Let me ask you a question. What you leaving in your pockets? How much meat you leaving on the bone? You so ready to empty it out. I didn't say empty it out. I said clear it, which means After you clear number two, claim it. Claim it. God said, drive the Canaanites completely out. This is what's crazy. He says, y'all can have that whole forest for the Canaanites were determined to live in that region. However, when the Israelites grew stronger, they subjected the Canaanites to forced labor, but did not drive them out completely. I want them to talk about that in the morning because that's powerful. He tells them, I want you to drive them completely out the land. What happens? The Israelites grew so strong that they subjected the Canaanites to slavery. D, they do to the Canaanites what people were doing to them. <laughs> the Israelites do to the Canaanites what Egypt did to the Israelites. And they were so arrogant that didn't think if God was God enough to bring them out, he ain't God enough to bring them out. Be careful when you're so bitter about your oppression, you become an oppressor. Be careful when you never heal from the stuff your parents did to you. Now you turn around doing them to your kids. Be careful when you're in a relationship that was so toxic that now you're making the person you're with pay for the person you left. Clear it. Claim it. Comfort it. Look what it says. Never lose sight of an opportunity because of the sight of an opponent. Conquer it. Conquer it. Making room for God will release his will for our lives. All the promises of God are preoccupied with opposition. You fight only when you know it belongs to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I fight by praying. I fight by tithing. I fight by trying to live the best life you called me to live. I fight, God, by being kind to those who despitefully use me. I fight by intercession. I fight by fasting. I fight by prayer. Because I know it's not by my might, but by your spirit, says the Lord. So, God, in this moment, give me what I need to properly clear it. God, let me assess every relationship, every business partnership. God, give me the maturity to assess my own decisions so I can be what you called me to be. God, I haven't always been perfect, haven't always made the right decisions. God, somebody right now doesn't feel qualified to assess because they're guilty. God, but your grace is sufficient. This is not the end. It's only a speed bump in destiny. So, Father, we ask in this moment, that we garner enough strength to trust you in the midst of trials and tribulations. We thank you in advance for just being God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Can you jump up and give God a hand clap of praise? Rock City! Wow. Listen, do me a favor. If you're online right now and you don't know Jesus, I believe this is the best day in the world to fall in love with God, man. I, maybe you're watching because somebody sent you the link. Or maybe you're watching because some kind of way you stumbled upon it. Or maybe you're watching because you love to watch, but you never really found a church home. This is the beautiful thing about technology. You can join a church from wherever you are in the world, man. And I firmly believe God's doing something special here at Rock City Church, and I want you to be a part of it. Life is not easy. I know people say it all the time, and social media makes you think people just got it so good. Hear me? So much of that stuff be fabricated. So much of it be Photoshopped. So much of it be filtered truth of the matter is life is difficult life is difficult and i believe you need a community and people you need a god who can help you navigate through all of that and i just think it's no better place than rock city church somebody say amen, amen. were you blessed today
Listen, I'm so excited, man, to everybody who's giving, everybody who's tithing. Stay connected to God. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Uh, one of the best compliments I got in the airport this past week was, Pastor Mike, you want to know why I like you? A young man from Louisiana, and we deep in Baton Rouge. We're going to have to go to Baton Rouge and do something. He said, Pastor Mike, I watch you because the first time I saw you with my girl, I'm sitting there making fun of you. This is a true story. He said, I was irritated. We stay together. We ain't married or nothing like that. And she get up all, you got to watch Pastor Mike, watch Pastor Mike. He said, you saying his name in the house like he all this? He said, the whole while you own, I'm talking about you. He said, I'm wearing you out too. Like so-and-so, oh, look at this one, look at this one. He lying, he lying. He said, and he said, 10 minutes in, I'm listening. He said, but the only trump card I had on you was, watch you ask for some money. Fake free, watch you ask for, why? He said, and you cut off. I was like, why you ask for no money? She's like, I'm not passing, I'll be doing all that. But to me, man, it's not that we don't ask for money because we need it. We got a lot we do for the community and we do it at our church. I just don't believe I can get you to do something God can't get you to do. So for me, I'd rather teach you, love on you, and do my best to lead you. Giving is between you and God. Now, I don't know about you, three of y'all going to catch this. I'm a giver in Jesus' name. I learned when I was seven years old, you can't be God-given. So I believe that. So let me free you. To all of the new members we have, we teach this in Pathway to Purpose. We don't tithe because we're scared of God. I don't even believe you're going to hell if you don't tithe. I believe he died. Either he died for everything or he didn't die for nothing. So hear me when I say this. If you choose not to tithe, that's between you and God. You still a member of this church. We still love you the same. I don't see who give no way, so I'm going to hug you like you gave a million dollars. Hear me when I say this, but I do believe you're not as blessed as you could be because that's a principle. Look at Chick-fil-A. I don't care what you say. They ain't even open on Sunday. And God bless them because they understand a principle that if I sacrifice for God, God will take care of the rest. So I'm excited about it. I love you so, 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 so much. Listen, guys, I need you to stay locked and loaded. I cannot wait to text its own. I cannot wait to tell you its own. I believe we're inching so, 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 so 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 close and i can't wait to see this place filled i want you to stay locked and loaded to devo energy they're going to be asking you some questions this week like service times because i don't think we can have one service here uh i don't possibly think we can do two services here honestly we may have to do three so i'm praying about is it going to be an 8 10 30 12 30 a 9 10 30 12 30 that just means we need more volunteers. So if you're watching right now, join the 12 all week. Everybody who leads Devo Energy, make sure we're pushing the opportunity for them to join the 12 because I don't want to wear out my children's church workers. You don't like your kids, so don't make us be with your kids all day either. In Jesus' name, amen. So listen, we need more children's church workers. We need more singers. We need more everything. Volunteers, all my fellas. Rockefellers, give me a roof, roof. We need every man in our church to get involved in something. I want a man church. I really want when you pull up to our campus, you see nothing but some strong men saying hello, they love you, opening doors for you, making you feel comfortable. That's the type of community we want to build. So I love you so much for that. Were you blessed today? Yeah. Clap your hands then, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father God, in Jesus' name, our answer is yes. And we pray a simple prayer. Your will. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say it. Amen. God bless you. We are. Give God a hand right there. Let me say this to you guys. Wow. Yes, God. Thank you, Winning Lord. season. You know, we always pray for God's uh, presence mm. and we pray for God to, you know, really... Uh, come where we are and meet us when we come yes. and worship. And when he does it, I think it's good for us to tell him thank you, God. Thank yeah, you for showing thank you, up. Lord. Thank you for blessing us with Hallelujah. this incredible word, uh, this worship today that is really, really um, just, it's, it's really strengthened my faith mm. and, and, and helped me to experience, like you were talking about, joy uh, in our lounge. Yeah. Our kind of all joy. We know yes. the joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes, Lord. And his, in his uh, presence, there is fullness of mm. joy. Uh, and so just, God, we thank you for what you've done yep. today. We thank you for the lives that have been touched, the people that are coming to Christ. God, we thank you just that we to experience your presence yes, uh, once again. Now you say, James, you know, that word really blessed me and I want to be a part of what's happening in Rock City. I want to give my life to Christ. Uh, you can do that by simply texting the word home to 28950. You see it on the screen, that's home to 28950. 
1-800-273-8850. We would love to have you as a part of this Rock City family. You see what God is doing. You yes. see how God is moving through our pastor, through this ministry. Uh, it's unprecedented. What God is doing yeah. is completely blowing our mind. Oof. We give God all the glory because he could have picked anybody. Yep. He has access to the best. Come so on. the fact that he chooses to use Jesus. us, he doesn't need us, but he wants us. Yeah. It's enough for us to just say, God, we thank you. And we would love to have you. And if you're giving today, Listen, I don't even want to follow up behind that. You see the information on the screen. I think the importance here is that you make your next move your best, best move, move, as Brother yeah. James said. So text home to 28950. Yeah. Get seed in the ground. I do believe uh, the Bible says that uh, he gives seed to the sower. Yeah. And so we believe that God is going to send increase in your house as he continues mm -hmm. to increase us here in this house. So look, we will see you tomorrow morning yes. starting at 721 for D Vo Energy. Energy. Yes. Wait, we love y'all so much. God bless you. Peace.